Three, two, one. 99 red balloons floating in the summer sky. What is going on, guys? Wiser here coming to you with a recap on one of the last four for 2.0. As you could tell, maybe from my little musical intro there. Uh, this was our CWL week five matchup versus the one and only 99 death balloons. 86 to 82.0 came out on fire. We came to play today and it really showed. Um, for those of you who don't know, there is an old German song called 99 Luft Balloons, which actually, I guess, when sort of translated to English is 99 Red Balloons. One of my old favorite punk bands, Goldfinger, did an awesome cover of it. And all freaking week, um, knowing this matchup was coming, I literally had this song stuck in my head over and over and over again. Uh, super excited for this war. So great, uh, great job, 2.0, 86 to 80, like I said. Uh, we came out to play, improved to 3-2 and two in the CWL, so fantastic work. I did also want to mention a few things uh, before I get into too much of the recaps. Invicta had their Week 1 uh, CWL light match versus the OSF. Uh, came away with a huge 10-star victory. Now, there were some factors involved in that. I do feel a little bad uh, for the OSF, I'm not going to lie. First of all, there were some sort of like weight issues going into it. Um, we were trying to figure things out uh, between uh, our leadership, their leadership, and the CW admins. So there was just a lot of frustration building up towards that. And then we don't know exactly what happened, but one of the Town Hall 10s that the OSF had, um, we don't know if someone had access to their account. We don't. We have no idea. I don't even think they know what happened. Uh, but someone managed to log on to the, one of their town hall tens that had the info for it and made two of their attacks and dropped one archer and quit. So they were down two town hall ten attacks from the get go. Uh, definitely had a bit of a weight disadvantage. So again, um, although it was great in victory for uh, Invicta, uh, was could be I can imagine was extremely frustrating for the OSF and uh, just you know. Shout out to DWS and those guys over there because uh, they too do a lot of work and uh, really were prepping for that day and it just kind of all sort of blew up in their face uh, and, you know, very negative start for them uh, into the <laughs> CWL light. So, uh, you know, my hearts go out to those guys because I can only imagine uh, being in that situation would be like, anyways, let's move on because I got a lot, of a lot to do. I've already done this recap once. I rushed home from work last night at midnight and did it. Pissed my wife off because I was doing a recap at midnight, uh, mainly because I had to work today. And I get 24 hours to do this recap. So uh, I literally had to come home and leave work for half an hour just so I could do this. So we're going to fly through this real quick. Uh, Death Balloons had had their struggles. Um, ended up using, let's check it out real fast. I think one, two, maybe two or three bullies in the end. Um, did come away with a 10 versus 10 trip. Uh, a couple bully successes. But other than that, um, you know, I ended up leaving TU on the board. And... Sort of ended up being the demise for them. Now, we, uh, although we had our struggles on their 11s, I'm not going to lie. Their 11s did a great job defending, but it was not enough. We had so many attacks left over. I do want to quickly show uh, and give a shout out to my Town Hall 9s because we were on fire. I think we had over a 75% fresh hit triple rate. Uh, we're going to go ahead and check this out right here. Check out all these six packs. Um, you know, our town top three Town Hall 11s, all three of them came through with us, came through on those Town Hall 10s. Very, very huge for us. Uh, then you go down to the Town Hall 9s. A lot, of, a lot of these guys were just using scouts at this point. I know Tosh, you know, on number seven and number two, a nine versus 11 there, obviously. Uh, but that's because everything was cleared. Bucko, six pack. Pitt, 199%. Why is there six pack? Uh, Sir Cass six pack, PH six pack, you know, Val 194 percent, uh, Ryan six pack, JP six pack, just awesome job by our town all nines. Really, really proud of you guys. Good, good, uh, bounce back for the CWL here for us. But like I said, I'm a little bit uh, crunched on time and I got a lot of attacks I really want to show you here. So we're going to start off on Robbie here. Rob's going to go ahead and uh, bring in a pretty standard Shattered Blalo. Now, one of the things I've been getting asked is for my thoughts on the um, on the post update. What does it mean for the game right now? I can pretty much sum it up like this, guys. Lalo is king at all Town Hall levels. 9, 10, 11. Uh, I'm going to show you few different variations at the Town Hall 9 level, what guys are doing, and sort of explain how that carries on to Town Hall 10 and Town Hall 11, right? Uh, same goals, same ideas, just 
gets a little bit trickier when uh, obviously you go up to 10 and 11 um, and just going in getting a couple air defense the queen and the cc uh, obviously there's inferno towers involved there's eagle cannons involved as you go up and up but same sort of principles we're going to go ahead and send in two golden's like rob here get your funneling down right nice funnel get all those bowlers to go on the base get your queen to go on the base make sure those objectives are taken care of He's already got three air defenses and is about to lock onto a third. So Rob goes ahead and gets that air in ASAP. A few balloons on each defense down there at the nine o'clock. Hound goes in, gets burst fairly quickly. <clears throat> so the second Hound is in. It's letting all those uh, loons sort of progress into the middle of the base. He's got so many left over. Keeping hanging on to those cleanup troops. Queen is in there. There's no air defenses left, and there's a shit ton of balloons and a full health hound. Did not even need that lab hound <laughs> with what his kill squad got. Let's go ahead, we're going to send in some wall breakers <laughs> just for funsies. As you can see, base is absolutely going to get trashed here. A lot of cleanup troops left. Uh, one thing I did mention in my last video uh, is just that sort of talked about how, what I see as the primary factor for failing Lalo's. It's cleanup and not saving that cleanup balloon. Uh, it is very, very, very important, guys, that you save your cleanup. One thing that I've been doing in my attacks is when you look down at your troop bar and you were literally about to deploy that last troop, take three seconds and look at the map, look at the base, and just make a quick judge of where the best spot to drop that last troop is. Because, you know, if it's a balloon and you're just waiting for that one troll Tesla in the corner to go down, then wait, hang on to it. Because sometimes more often than not it's going to save your raid so nice job robbie sorry about that guys I had to sort of restart here my uh blue stacks is going freaking nuts in the background i have no idea why but hopefully it's fixed now uh we're going to jump in and check out ryan's hit now different version of the lalo this time he's just going to go ahead and bring four lava hounds 20 balloons and a bunch of funneling and cleanup troops. Now, the idea here is the suicide heroes are going to go in. He gets that baby dragged down and make sure the king sort of funnels right into that queen. Quick poison down to help take care of those clan castle troops. I uh, thought the only kind of weird thing here was the defensive queen does take care of the CC troops here. Down they go. Down goes the baby drag. But then stands there and attacks the storages instead of locking onto that defensive queen that is literally standing right in front of her, killing his queen's own archers but finally she locks on finishes off that defensive queen and their job is done so goes ahead and drops very strategic spot on that uh earthquake it does get the sweeper and softens up those other buildings while at the same time allowing him to zap quake that one air defense so goes ahead and gets that max hound in right away uh this tesla popping through a little bit of a monkey ranch into the plan i believe his pathing idea was to go to this cannon next like this one balloon is but the rest of them end up going over this wizard tower and piddling out but no big deal it's got more than enough balloons more than enough hounds to take care of business for the rest of this base so here goes that next hound in popping that tesla farm gonna go ahead and get a raid spell over the expos here i thought that was a good idea just get the expo one shot and move right over to those Teslas down they go in one shot and down goes the air defense only one air defense remains over here at the two o'clock location goes ahead and gets that other hound in on top of it does get the max hound a burst but I don't believe gets the other hound a burst uh, always a tricky thing to to pick the exact perfect amount of hounds and also deploy them in the fashion so that you're going to get max value of tanking but also getting them burst at the same time but as you can see with the cleanup troops he saved it's got pops all over the base this base is done for. Down goes the wizard tower. Down goes the mortar. Clean up time for Ryan. Boom, boom, boom. Nice job, my friend. Tree in the bag. Blam. <clears throat> All right, moving on. What else we got here? derp a -doo. I want to show this because this is a very innovative base design. This sort of all these air defense going through the middle of the base in the uh, anti bowler chambers. One thing I'm seeing with the new uh, meta designs are sort of going, uh, sort of really focusing on protecting against Bolalo. But what that sort of does is it opens you up to these other forms of attacks. Um, Actually, I think this one he does. No, he's got to be bringing a max down in the CC. I don't think it's bowlers. Uh, but he's going to go ahead and get this queen in, take care of the clan castle troops. Bit of a slow process getting that witch to come all the way over to her. But goes in, gets a rage down, burn through those skellies, burn through that baby drag. Gets the king in there to help with the wall as well. I don't know if you forgot wall breakers here. Um, 
because a couple wall breakers under that rage would let that king in right away. He would have been started working on this stuff very, very quickly. But finally does beat through the wall. I think he's sort of lucky that the king did not walk down here. But no big deal. Queen and king are now in. Air defense number two is now dead. Expo is now dead. Just going to continue to work the king and the queen up through the center of this base. And once he gets this third air defense down, or is uh, in the process uh, of getting it down, he's going to go ahead and send in these lava hounds and start sending in these balloons. Now, everything's going to sort of end up over this queen chamber. My first question when I saw this attack was, well, how are you going to get the queen? But uh, because he ends up saving a rage and, and sort of ends up planning for it, rage pups end up taking care of the defensive queen. I thought it ended up just being so cool how the defensive queen ends up going down. She locks onto the hound here. You're going to see this happen in a minute. The queen's going to lock onto the hound. And in the same token, it also helps, like I was just saying, to ensure that um, your hounds burst. Because he does get this one hound to burst. A skelly spell. Nice distraction for the queen. Well, all these balloons end up getting on. And see this, uh, see the rage with the skelly spells, with the pups. They end up taking care of the defensive queen and the defensive king in the same token. So a really good job there. Has a bazillion balloons working on over to these last few defenses from basically the uh, 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock locations. Has two more cleanup balloons in the bag. He ends up dropping them over here on this cannon. I would have saved them for cleanup, but I guess when you look at the base, yeah, see, I probably would have dropped them just to help this minion out up here. But how do you critique a three star? Really difficult to do. Down goes the Tesla, down goes the Arch Tower, and it's cleanup time for dirt. Boom, 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 boom. And that is a tree star in the bag for my man Derp. Good job. Uh, one more up here. We got Bucko. Sometimes you don't even really need funneling troops. <laughs> Bucko brings four hounds, 25 balloons, and five archers. Now, the reason being is because this little queen chamber here doesn't need any sort of funneling troops just to go right in at the clan castle, right in at the defensive queen. Just like we saw in one of the previous attacks, using just the king and queen to take care of those objectives, the defensive queen and the clan castle. And as you can see, King's going to go hit that raid, bust through the wall, so the, uh, allow the queen access, smacks down that defensive queen. They're going to do a little bit of cleanup action on this section of the base, and he's going to go ahead and start deploying uh, these hounds and balloons. He doesn't bring the zap quake, he just brings five haste and rages. Goes ahead and basically just two per defense on the outside. Two very quick haste. It's going to throw everything right into the base very, very quickly. Get in on over top of that uh, air defense. Nice little rage placement. So down goes that first air defense. We got another hound going in down at the uh, 7 o'clock air defense here. Another haste spell just throwing everything in very, very quickly. Nice sort of methodical placement on all the balloons here. Gets that last hound in on that second last air defense. Nice little haste spell again, pushing those balloons right on top of things. It's going to push everything else over to that side of the base. <clears throat> this little Tesla farm just poses a little bit of threat. I, he's got to get that haste down. Got to get that haste down. There it goes. Work these balloons on over to these Teslas. They're just having, you know, heyday on these balloons. But he's got more than enough to take care of them. Down they go. Let's get on over to that last remaining air defense. And let that hound burst just in time. We pop. Boom, down goes the expo. All we got to go is a troll Tesla in the corner. We still have a queen ability intact up there. A bunch of archers around the base helping do clean up with the pups. Absolutely crushed it, Bucko. Nice job, my friend. Slag the ability. Uh, I think I got one more town on mine. Uh, did want to make some mention about Paragon Hunter. This guy is awesome. He, a uh, little bit of a story, you know, and one thing I did want to touch on in this video as well was something I talked about in the last video was sort of, sort of a controversial topic within our clan um, about the recruitment process, about how it works. Um, one thing I, we have always as the 2.0 family prided ourselves on is the relationships we build within the clan because of how our recruiting process goes. However, it sort of is a good thing and a bad thing at the same time because although we do build awesome relationships with great people in the clan that want to be just part of the family as part of the family and not necessarily care as much about the spotlight of being in 2.0 or being in that main CWL league, um, because of that fact, we definitely uh, don't get applicants or a lot of applicants from you know, other top clans, guys that might just want to change the pace from the clan they're in. And I did mention that we are going to make sure that we're being very aware and sort of creating opportunities for guys coming from other top clans to get a chance to sort of 
uh, skip a little bit of our, our recruiting process. Um, now, with that being said, that doesn't mean we're going to completely throw all our core values out the window. That doesn't mean that if you're an awesome proven Invicta or Swarm guy that you're not going to you're going to get leapfrog by these other guys. We are going to treat everything by a case by case basis. We're giving people chances. We're not giving people guarantees. So I want to make that very, very clear. There is no way 2.0 will ever get away from the overall family culture and family atmosphere that we create while at the same time trying to be a top tier elite war clan. And I just think, uh, you know, for anyone who watches the channel, Falls 2.0, even guys within the own, own clan that just watch my content, um, that doesn't mean anything other than the fact that we're going to just do our best and a better job as leadership to make sure that we're creating opportunities for everybody deserving equally. So, you know, you guys in Swarm putting in your time, that doesn't mean anything. If you're an awesome attacker, you show us that, you are you deserve to be part of the family, you're going to get that chance. All I was saying in that last video is we're, we're just going to be more aware and, and more proactive with leadership about creating, creating chances for these people. Now, Paragon Hunter literally was a long, long time standing Invicta member. He now is literally, I can say this based on stats, is our top town online attacker right now. Now, PH put in his time. PH is just an awesome individual altogether. And seeing a success story like him um, is part of the reason why we, we loved our old, old system of recruiting so much because it builds and develops guys like PH and you know, seeing him bring 11 dragons to, to just three-star max town all by like that is just absolutely awesome. And I did just want to give a shout out to PH individually because he is he is the prime example of what we loved about our old system. And uh, again, I want to make this very clear. We're not we're not changing anything so drastically that, that the same people aren't going to get the same chances. We're just making sure that People don't get discouraged from applying to begin with, knowing there's a chance that they're going to be an evicted for six months um, without being given an opportunity to really show us their stuff in 2.0. So, um, and again, with the roster, with the way the rosters are for CWL, changes are going to be occurring all the time. People are going to be in, in certain matches all the time. People are going to be going back and forth to Invicta and back and forth between seasons. And we're really going to use the opportunity in the off season, just like a sports team to really look at the overall picture, who's doing well, who's struggling a little bit and just making changes accordingly. And there should be nothing, nothing wrong with that whatsoever. So um, really quickly want to fall into these last town hall 10 trips and sort of explain my thoughts uh, of Lalo as king, and you're going to see Zerds here make an awesome attack. He's going to walk this queen down. What Zerds recognizes, both these air defense are exposed. Why? Because of this little nook here. The queen can stand in here and have access to both those air defense. So he's going to go ahead and abuse that. He's going to walk the queen down, get her in this nook, kill both those air defense, continue walking her down, meet up with the kill squad, jump on over to this queen chamber, and basically take almost the whole bottom half of this base out in the process and still have two lab hounds and 17 balloons for the back end for basically one air defense and you know this back end stuff <clears throat> so nice little job pulling up that clan castle down it goes see you later dragon queen's gonna step up in a moment and take care of air defense number two nice little job to make sure his golems are out to the right spot little free uh, one for one trade with the balloon there so now it goes air defense number Two, goodbye. <clears throat> and we're looking good at this point, right? He's, he's got to get that rage down, keep that queen going. She's going to keep on going, take care of his defenses down at six. And he's going to go ahead and drop a golem, I believe. Or maybe just a suicide king. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, it's not a golem. It's just a suicide king with four Valkyries. Nice little placement on the on those wizards there to funnel. Uh, waits for this arch tower to lock onto the queen, gets the wizards down quickly, takes care of those two buildings, and opens up the wall and only leaves one path for his valks, one path for his king, which is right on over to this queen chamber, right through, right past this level two inferno that the queen's going to take out herself. Valks and king are going to do work, take care of that defensive queen, and goodbye. Blam, down she goes. So in come the hounds. So hound number one, a couple balloons, make sure to try and protect that queen as long as possible. Really good job on that. I like the entry. The only threat is now this inferno and Tesla farm chamber surrounding that last 
air defense, but goes ahead and gets that free spell down very quickly, gets a couple Teslas and the air defense at the same time, rages those balloons right in onto that, uh, into that chamber, down goes that stuff super quickly, really only that Inferno and Expo to go. Boom, 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 down it goes, a little mini for cleanup, why not? Just got a few trash buildings to take care of, and Z absolutely crushes his base. Nice job, my friend. Boom. <clears throat> and next on the block, my man kicked backs, kicking it back. And <clears throat> I think this was the second hit on this base. Uh, Zerds actually had a fresh hit. It was uh, very, very close. I thought it was sort of interesting that kickbacks didn't offer a baby drag right here. Take care of this gold mine. Uh, primarily because in the first hit, the queen, the way Zerd placed his queen ended up leaving her to look onto this side and she ended up going out and on into the base. Now, if you watch his queen here, as soon as the clan castle dies, she takes a step, but this bowler kills it just in time and she goes back into the base. She had went for that army camp. There's no way she was going back into that base. So, uh, sort of, uh, ended up lucking out a little bit there, but, uh, that's part of the game too. So uh, Alpha now has all these bowlers in there, has that queen in there under the rage, finishing off those high hit point structures. The queen's going to end up stepping up even and taking care of the last shot on this Inferno Tower, I believe, and hit that ability in one moment. So goes ahead and gets those uh, Lava Hounds in nice and quickly. Nice little haste spells down. Going to push those balloons through the Wiz Tower as soon as possible, right on top of the Inferno. Nice little freeze, buying them enough time. As soon as the Inferno Tower goes down, we drop a heal. Now, the heal is not only going to keep that Lava Hound alive just long enough to get over to this air defense, but it's going to allow the balloons enough time to get over top of those Teslas, back over to this next haste spell, take care of that uh, Expo, get over to that last air defense. Down it goes. We got more than enough balloons all over the base, and we have that one cleanup balloon, which I think he drops a little preemptively there. Uh, kind of wanting that one for one trade, but because of the uh, the air mine, does not get it. <clears throat> so could have waited on that. I might have opted. I mean, he does have these cleanup troops up on this spot. He's got pups down at the six o'clock. So didn't really need it, um, but at the same token, might have wanted to save it anyways. But it doesn't matter. Really, that's all there is to go on this base and the cleanup. Boom, down it goes. See, like he could have dropped that loon and got it going on there. I don't know. Whatever. Clean up troops, guys. Always got to be conscious of it. Always, always, always. But KB comes away with a very, very sexy triple. Nice job, buddy. Uh, one more to show you here. My man Ice squeaks one out here. <clears throat> so another little version is bringing a gold this time. Not suicide here. He's bringing seven bowlers with his kill squad this time. So uh, instead of the Valks, right? Again, guys, it's all the same principles. You, you just got to figure out what objectives you want. Figure out the strength of kill squad that you want um, or you think you're going to need to make sure you take care of the objectives you need or want. And attack accordingly. I mean, you obviously want to be as efficient as you possibly can with your kill squad, but at the same token, you don't want to be short. A lot of times your kill squad leaves a hole in your sack, and then it doesn't matter what you do on the back end, you're not going to come away with the triple. So he's got those bowlers, everything in nice and tight. I think he does have one sort of walk on the outside. No, it goes inside. Beautiful. Reed spell goes down. Now goes that first air defense. Poison is down, taking care of those clan castle troops. Bam, bam, bam. So, beautiful job. I mean, uh, one little thing I think this base could have used. I think if that Inferno Tower was a multi-target, none of these bowlers would be alive um, and everything would have been attacking the Queen by now. Fortunately, that is not the case because it was a single-target Inferno. Still can't ever, in my opinion, justify having a single-target Inferno in high-level war. But, might be worth playing around with here and there. But, you're going to have guys like Ice who just completely abuse it. Send in a bunch of giants, send in a bunch of bowlers, and you know it's going to be forever before that Inferno takes care of all those troops. But as you can see, he's got both the air defense on the backside. He's got quite a few of the defensive buildings, so he's just going to really got to take care of now the uh, 9 to 12 section. Haste all over the place, balloons all over the place. Has no hounds remaining, but now there is no air defenses remaining in the same token. So he's just got to work through the rest of these defenses. There are two wizard towers and two archer towers on this back end he needs to worry about. <clears throat> now, you're going to see he comes very, very close to maybe not getting this raid because these balloons do not make it to this wizard tower. I got highlighted on the end here. Now, luckily, you're going to see because of the new balloon AI, these last couple balloons, or even the, I think it's the last one balloon, I should say, 
gets to this wizard tower and does get one bomb off. And because of that, the wizard tower has like a sliver of health. Now, wizard towers are the complete counter to lava pups and minions. So you'd expect if this balloon does not get this wizard tower, these pups are not going to finish off the base. However, this new balloon AI, look how close this is. As soon as it gets there, boom, gets the bomb off. Normally, back in the old days, there's no way that balloon would have got the bomb off. If the balloon didn't get the bomb off, there's no way these pups would have taken care of that wizard tower as the last building remaining. But you're going to see the job they do. The sliver of health on the tower. Down it goes. Tree in the bag for my man ice. Good job, my friend. <clears throat> so that's it. And then the same sort of ideas carry up to Talon 11, guys. It's just sort of uh, tweaking uh, tweaking some form of Lalo and completing objectives. Um, you know, changing up your kill squad, changing up your funneling troops bringing bowlers or bringing boss, helping bolster, but all of those things need to be done for a good reason. And, um, you know, you really got to break down the base on exactly what your kill squad, squad is going to get and then making sure that you have enough back in Lalo to get through the rest, making sure that you have enough back in Lalo to work through a sweeper that maybe didn't go down to your kill squad or, um, you know, God forbid you don't get one of the air defenses on your entry, you know, you, you're going to want to plan for those things. So just something to think about. Uh, I'm finding the same thing with the Town Hall 11s, not necessarily 11 versus 11, because I don't think we've quite broken into that plane yet. Uh, but all these bullies guys are pretty much <laughs> all uh, all Lalos at the end, all these uh, 11 versus 10. So anyhow, I just want to say thank you for the war, 99 Death Balloons. Uh, it was a pleasure. Hopefully we meet again down the road here in CWL 2.0. Love you guys. Fantastic bounce back. Good to, good to get another W in CWL, go up three and two. We did not want to drop under 500, that's for sure, especially going into Golden Goblins next week. So look forward to that, guys. Golden Goblins matchup next weekend. Should have a couple random elites throughout the week to show you here, but... Till then, I gotta get back to work, so that'll do it for your wisdom from Wiser. Just trying to help beg that next tree start. Till then, I'm out.